Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy, and I'll be hosting today's show. First graphic showing uh, winter weather advisories continuing here through midnight Sunday night for the Alaska Range, uh, looking for anywhere from as much as two to four inches of snow from now until midnight tomorrow night with areas of possible freezing rain mixed in. Also, uh, gusty winds 30, 35 miles an hour through the passes, so that could reduce visibilities and blowing snow. Winter weather advisory out until, uh, let's see, 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, here for the uh, southern Cusquam Valley, Antioch, Sleep Mute, and those areas for uh, several inches of snow to fall, one to three inches, possibly mixed with freezing rain at times there. And then uh, back to winter weather advisories again here for the mid or the actually the lower Yukon River Valley, Yukon Delta, on up across the Lado Hills, and then the south coast of the Seward Peninsula, including White Mountain, uh, Gullivan, and Nome, and I, uh, for anywhere from two to four inches of snow possibly falling. And that's out until uh, midnight Sunday night, tomorrow night. And then it should uh, end or, you know, they'll kick it out longer. Moving on to satellite imagery, a lot of clouds over the interior, especially in the west and the north. A little bit of a break here from uh, roughly northern Seward Peninsula around Shishmara in toward the southeast there, but not much. And uh, a little bit better one here coming into Kodiak Island as a uh, band of moisture lifts northward. Out to the west, uh, different flow pattern here. Colder air coming down out of the Russian Far East and over the western Bering and uh, really loses its punch by the time it gets down to the Aleutians. Just a few showers here into the central Aleutians or areas of light rain. ADAC picked up about uh, roughly 15 hundredths of an inch during the 12-hour uh, period at 3 p.m. this afternoon. And then some showers over toward the Fox Islands and up to actually four-tenths of an inch fell across the Alaska Peninsula during the day today. Nelson Lagoon picking up about uh, 0.43 inches and about a third of an inch of liquid water equivalent precipitation falling, or it fell as all snow at, Unala at, um, sorry, at uh, Nelson Lagoon, mostly in the form of rain up here along the north coast of the Bristol Bay area. Again, about a third of an inch falling there. And same rainfall amounts occurring here on the north Gulf Coast. Heaviest over the Panhandle though, uh, oh, two inches fell in the 24-hour period ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon at Sitka. About 1.2 inches fell at Juneau, and uh, pretty good rainfall continuing into the afternoon today as well, with uh, this feed of moisture continuing uh, into the area, but enough warm air spreading in. The snow they received, um, Haynes, Klondike Highway, freezing rain, that's all ended by afternoon, and we got rain all the way up to Skagway and possibly even beyond there, with much lighter amounts down the southeast coast occurring. Uh, Kloak picked up nearly half an inch of rain, while Annette only had two hundredths and about only a couple hundredths also at Heidelberg. And you can see that uh, main first batch of moisture there slipping eastward, but kind of links up. Moisture catches up to it out as a, that west-southwest flow coming over the top of uh, ridge of high pressure here a little farther to the south. And that's uh, keeping the rain in, especially over the northern panhandle today. Uh, some moderate amounts, but generally starting to lighten up. Really light precipitation amounts up here over the interior, the western interior. Other than the tenth of an inch water equivalent, about an inch of snow fell in Nome. Otherwise, everywhere else had only a few hundreds to nothing at all. On the chart today, here's uh, weak low pressure lifting northward, and the front uh, still. Uh, along and off the coast there. One surge, actually the warm front having pushed through already earlier today. And uh, of course, uh, behind that, the warmer air changed uh, snow over to rain over the extreme northern southeast coast, links now all the way up to Skagway, as I mentioned. And then a band of rain south to north flow here, continuing across the Gulf of Alaska out of the Northeast Pacific. Continues to push moisture, but not all that heavy on the rainfall. 
Again, third of an inch falling at uh, Valdez and uh, two thirds of an inch Cordova in the last 24 hours, so nothing too spectacularly heavy. And we have that mixed precipitation pattern here, but again, mounts very light, heavier down along the Bristol Bay coast and the Alaska Peninsula due to this trough right through here, 989 millibar low just west southwest of Nunavak Island. And this trough that brought the uh, snow responsible for the advisories there on the south coast Seward Peninsula and in across the uh, Yukon Delta, mixed rain and snow conditions occurring there. Mostly uh, snow poured at St. Mary's as well as Nome. And out to the west, a trough dropping southward there. Again, about two tenths of an inch uh, worth at Adak. And for tonight, low pressure right off the Yukon Delta coast here. Kind of lifts north of Nunavak Island now and several troughs kind of rotating around that center. Well, like a pinwheel, that keeps a chance of snow, light snow or flurries here northward across the uh, northwest coast. Uh, maybe Kivlina, Point Hope, Cape Lisburn, Point Lay. Cutting off around uh, Wainwright may see a few flurries, but nothing significant. Dry to the east there across the Brooks Range North Slope in the Arctic Coast. The areas of clearing, and that'll allow temperatures easily to drop back below zero tonight. And then the mixed precipitation, freezing rain, the advisory here for the uh, Antioch Sleep Mute area. And again, the advisory also up along the Alaska Range. Copper River Basin could see some maybe areas of mixed precipitation tonight. North Gulf Coast stays wet with uh, possibly moderate amounts coming back in with another trough lifting northward, but rainfall will be lighter over the northern panhandle. Just a risk of some showers down to the south, so staying rather dry down in that area. And chance of rain for Kodiak Island. And looking ahead to uh, tomorrow, another system lifting northward here along this uh, rather stationary frontal boundary. And that'll actually start to increase the moisture once again along the North Gulf Coast, especially in the afternoon. Right now, just staying uh, rain, light rain for the most part. Could get moderate again around Yakutat, uh, Elfin Cove, back to maybe Cordova possibly, but nothing, nothing too serious. Only a risk of some showers down over the southern panhandle. Stays dry up over the northern interior, all the way out to the Arctic coast with uh, some areas of clearing. Chance of flurries, light snow, more likely flurries occurring here for the central and west side there of the Arctic coast. Kivalina, maybe some clearing there, and then the chance of snow continues for Norton Sound and Seward Peninsula back into the lower, possibly mid Yukon Valley, but again, mounts nothing too significant. Over the uh, next 36 hours could pick up, uh, up to uh, maybe one to three inches, and that's about it. Just look for scattered mixed precipitation here over the southwest interior behind the uh, occluded front. A little more widespread uh, rain and snow. Colder air should uh, result in mostly snow, hopefully, for the St. Lawrence Island area, but amounts will be light. A little bit of a pickup in the winds, but not too great. Looks like the gradient will be back up over the Russian Far East. So really just a uh, breeze occurring over the St. Lawrence Island area. A little breezier, though, for the Alaska Peninsula. Could see gusts 35 miles an hour there from, say, Cold Bay. False pass on out to possibly the Fox Islands, although the winds turn in a little more westerly as this uh, system, not all that strong. In fact, uh, not even, it's not even strong by summer standards, pretty weak actually. And that'll spread some rain into the uh, central Aleutians. Really weakens here, drops off to the southeast, kind of a, uh, may redevelop here, but uh, pretty weak rain, Light rain for Adak Atka into the Alaska Peninsula across the Fox Islands with a warm front. Winds more westerly and not quite as strong. And then uh, rain ends, becomes showery out toward Chimney and Attu. Still a chance of light snow or flurries here in the shaded areas anywhere. Uh, probably heaviest back toward the Seward Peninsula, Norton Sound. Just uh, flurries, maybe some light snow. If you pick up anything more than an inch, consider it a bonus. Most areas will see much less than that and a mixed precipitation pattern continues in areas of the Copper River Basin, mostly south of the Alaska Range into uh, the Sitna Valley, but again, very light amounts. Stays wet along the North Gulf Coast, Southern Kenai Peninsula. Chance of rain continues here for Kodiak Island. And this front edge is a little farther over to the east, so chance of rain continues mainly over the northern Pano, light to the south. Low is not much different than what we've seen. Uh, 5 to 10 below northeast interior out to the Arctic coast. Mid to upper 30s, south central Alaska. Mid to upper 40s, Kodiak Island. And then the lower 40s for the Panhandle highs tomorrow. Mid to upper 40s, southeast coast uh, into the teens for the Burke's Range. Single numbers on the Arctic coast. And for the lows, again, 
Well above freezing here, mid-30s for South Central Alaska, near freezing in the Copper River Basin, upper 30s to lower to mid-40s for the Panhandle, upper 30s, lower 40s, Alaska Peninsula, upper 20s here for the Nome area, but upper 30s, St. Lawrence Island, and highs Monday afternoon, teens in the north, single numbers on the Arctic coast, and 40s, southern Alaska. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving into uh, flying weather here, we've got uh, IFR across the southwest coast from the northern Bering Sea, also up along the western central Alaska range. VFR to the north all the way out to the Arctic coast. IFR here, Prince William Sound in the north Gulf Coast. Uh, some IFR right over Kodiak Island, but from the Gulf of Alaska and across all the panhandle. IFR, that holds through uh, tomorrow. Get some improvement a little bit. Marginal VFR areas of the south. Otherwise, uh, mostly IFR for the North Gulf Coast, IFR along and south of the Central Alaska Range, eastern slopes of the Western Alaska Range, Cuscombe Valley Mountains all the way out to the uh, Yukon Delta coastline, marginal VFR to the north, nothing but marginal VFR out here to the west, a little improvement there south of the Alaska Peninsula and Fox Islands. And for Monday morning, IFR here, Southern Kenai Peninsula, North Gulf Coast uh, Range, Coast Range here, some of that on up into the Talkeetnas and portions of the Copper River Basin and also for the Talkeetnas. No change here for the Alaska Range. A lot of IFR over the western interior right up into the Kobuk, Koyukuk Valley and southeastern Brooks Range, upper Yukon Valley. And uh, a little better there for the southeast coast but holding IFR up, up north. And then for Monday afternoon, Still holding IFR up over Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, but marginal VFR all the way down to Dixon Entrance. Marginal VFR for the Gulf of Alaska with IFR in the Coast Range and Passage Canal, southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula. Marginal VFR to possibly breaking out to VFR for Cook Inlet and back into the IFR up along the central western Alaska Range, onto the west northwest of the Seward Peninsula northeastward across those northern valleys to the Brooks Range, marginal VFR for the Arctic Coast, Bering Sea, and a good portion of the Aleutians. Anatovic, VFR tomorrow. And again, same forecast, good VFR flying there with uh, Lake Clark and Merrill, call it IFR. And for rainy, IFR on the eastern approach, otherwise marginal VFR with maybe even possibly VFR on the western entrance, but call it marginal. Windy, marginal VFR. VFR off to the north there into the valley. And for Isabel, occasional IFR expected. Mentasta, marginal VFR. And for Tanita, marginal VFR. For Portage, IFR and Chilkoot and White, same forecast as Portage. IFR flying conditions uh, for at least through tomorrow and tomorrow night. And then for the freezing levels, uh, 2,000 feet all the way up here into the southern upper Yukon Valley, back to the west of Cuscombe Bay. We've got 4,000 feet over south central Alaska and the Copper River Basin, more or less, and even warmer conditions over the Panhandle, up to 8,000 feet, with cooler conditions back out over the Bering Sea. Icing, southerly flow continues to pull north, moisture northward here, so look for considerable moderate rime icing. Uh, eastern North Gulf Coast, Cape Yakutaga into the northern Panhandle, diminishing to none down toward the southern areas in Dixon Entrance, Prince of Wales Island. I uh, could see some considerable moderate. This mostly due to terrain enhancement and southerly flow there. Otherwise, uh, like to isolate moderate rime icing in the uh, shaded areas and a swath of that out here along the west coast from the Chuck CC through the Bering Strait all the way down to the Alaska Peninsula. Checking out the uh, jet stream, upper level trough here right through this area, a couple of low centers aloft. Uh, one south of Kodiak and the other one over the southwest uh, coast, ridging back out to the west there. So no big storms coming into the Bering Sea or the Aleutians. South to north flow, shifting a little farther to the east into the north Gulf Coast at about 70 knots. And at 9,000 feet, southerlies, uh, 35 to 50 central coast into the northern Panhandle, otherwise 25 knots. 35 knots right up to the north Gulf Coast, 25 to 30 into the interior. Uh, kind of diverging, subsiding up there toward the uh, Arctic coast, actually into the Brooks Range of the Arctic coast, and 15 to 20 here on the eastern side of this trot, uh, low center there over the Yukon Delta, a little brisker on the western side, 25 to 30, right on down across the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians. Pretty breezy at 9,000, up to 55 knots over the western Aleutians. Do that next 
uh, system way out here to the west. And uh, 30, 25 to 35, or actually 20 to 25 for the Aleutians, 30 knots eastern Aleutians, 35 for the far western areas. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop, Alaska Peninsula, Fox Islands, like to isolate it all the way out to Shimian at two, St. Lawrence Island, and some moderate chop here for Prince William Sound, eastern North Gulf Coast into the northern panhandle. It used to be that you could only warn one person about a tornado after it had already blown down someone else's barn. Now, on average, we're able to issue a tornado warning 15 minutes before the tornado's even there, and that wouldn't be happening without Doppler radar. This next rad system has reduced fatalities on the order of 45% due to tornadoes since its advent. We have a lot more information now about storms and being able to understand how they develop, how they produce severe weather, and how that information might be used to improve warnings for our National Weather Service partners. The lab is unique in that we serve the nation by supporting the National Weather Service in its mission to protect lives and safe property by improving the accuracy and the lead time of severe weather warnings. We have a legacy of radar research and converting existing technology from military to weather purposes. A recycled Doppler radar led to the development of NEXRAD, installed nationwide in the early 90s. It allowed forecasters to see storms like never before. Not only did we help bring that technology to the National Weather Service and to help protect lives and property, but we have continued to upgrade that technology, keep it relevant, and keep it state of the art. Recently, a major upgrade was added. Dual polarization technology takes the radar from 2D to 3D. Forecasters now know more about what type of precipitation is falling which is very helpful during winter storms, as well as how much rain is accumulating, resulting in better flash flood warnings. The radar can also detect and track tornadoes based on debris. Looking to the future, the National Severe Storms Lab is testing the capabilities of phased array radar. Originally used by the US Navy, the antenna scans the skies electronically rather than mechanically, allowing the radar to focus on a storm. With current technology, we get a full picture or image of what is going on within a storm every four to five minutes. So it's more like a snapshot. Whereas with phased array radar, we get that picture of what's going on in the storm every minute. So it becomes more like watching a movie. So we can do adaptive, rapid scanning on the storms that matter most, being able to provide the information that's most relevant when and where it's happening. Another advantage of phased array radar is its multifunction capability, providing weather and air traffic information simultaneously. Number one, it is a system that promises to replace and expand upon the existing weather surveillance radars. Secondly, to replace aging air traffic surveillance radars. And number three, it offers a potential application to meet Department of Homeland Security and Defense requirements for identifying and tracking non-cooperative aircraft. With the replacement of all these various radars with a single system, the American taxpayer could realize substantial savings in cost. You have a lot fewer radars to maintain and the electronic capability of this also reduces maintenance costs because you do not have moving parts. Not too long ago, the ability to predict severe weather was thought to be impossible. During the past several decades, research conducted at the National Severe Storms Lab has developed life-saving tools like Doppler radar. We've progressed from no warning of threatening weather to about a 15-minute lead time, and current research promises to extend that much further. 
our knowledge of severe storms and how they behave, and our use and ability to use the Doppler radar technology and is, is in a lot of cases a direct result of that close working relationship, that research to operations component that we get between the National Severe Storms Laboratory and a forecast office. That history and understanding of how these data can be used by our users and doing the research to help advance the use of radar technology. Really, it's what we live for. It's in our lifeblood. It's in our history. It's now easier than ever to be a part of Weather Research. We just launched the mPing app for both iPhone and Android users, and it's totally free. Ping, which stands for Precipitation Identification Near the Ground, is a research project by the NOAA National Severe Storms Lab and the University of Oklahoma. With the mobile app, you can send us your weather observations on the go. Are snowflakes falling on your head? Is hail hitting your car? Just select what type of precipitation is falling and press submit. It's that easy. It takes about five seconds and it's anonymous. Reports can then be viewed online. Our scientists will compare your report with what the radar has detected. This helps us develop new radar technologies and techniques. Download the app today, share your reports, and let's work together to make our nation weather ready. Learn more here and follow us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis, really not a lot of change from what we had yesterday. Uh, still ice slowly advancing southward here across the Chukchi Sea, and uh, really not a lot of change here along the west coast. And no big changes are expected over the next several days. Coastal water forecast, southeast coast, south winds 25 knots, southeast 25 in the extreme north coast, seas running 9 to 11 feet. Inside water, small craft advisory is also out for uh, Clarence Strait, Stevens Passage, southeast winds 25 there, 5 foot seas. A little bit lighter, south 20, 4 foot seas for Lynn Canal. Next day, Monday, southeast 15 for uh, the canal with 3 foot seas. And winds down now under small craft level advisories. Uh, small craft advisory levels there, southeast 20 for Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait, all the inside waters here under small craft advisories. Still along the coast, though, south winds uh, 20 knot, 25 knots, I'm sorry, with 11 to 12 foot seas on the south coast. A little bit stronger, southeast 30 knots with seas 14 to 15 feet in the north coast. Cook Inlet tomorrow, small craft advisories, northeast 25. Sea 7 feet, south 25 for Kamishak Bay with uh, 5 foot sea, south 15 for the Barren Islands, southeast 15 for the western North Gulf Coast, eastern North Gulf Coast there, Middleton Island and those areas southeast 35, so some gale force winds expected there, east 30 knots, 6 foot seas for Prince William Sound. And then those come down considerably for Monday, southeast 15 with seas down to 3 feet there for the Sound, south 20 for the eastern North Gulf Coast, southwest 20 for the west side, and uh, Kamishak Bay, Barren Islands, west-northwest, 15 knots with 5 to 7 foot sea. Southern Cook Inlet, west at 15. North of the Forelands, variable to southeast at 10. Light winds with slight seas. Bristol Bay, west winds, 20 knots. And the Alaska Peninsula, west-northwest at 30 with 11 to 14 foot seas. Castle Cape to Sitkanak, west 15. Kodiak Island, southwest 15 with 4 to 7 foot seas. And for Monday, west 20 for uh, Shelikoff Strait here with six foot seas, east side of Kodiak, northwest 25, higher gusts with 10 foot seas, and westerlies to 25 here, Sitkanak Castle Cape, Alaska Peninsula, west 25 to 30, good for small craft advisory seas, 12 to 13 feet, west 25 for Bristol Bay, and nine foot seas. 
Western Aleutian southwest 30 knots tomorrow, 10 to 12 foot seas there. West 25 to 30, Adak and Atka. And northwest 30 here for in toward Unmak Island. And then on Alaska Island, gale force west, northwest winds in the forecast with seas running 14 to 16 feet. And for Monday, those come down to westerly 25 with uh, 12 to 13 foot seas. Edging back up to 30 knots here from the west-southwest, all the way out to Adak, and then turning west 30 to about Kiskaram Chitka, and then from there out northwest at 25 with 11-foot seas. Southwest coast, north of Nunavak Island, that'll be the strongest wind area into the northern Bering Sea. Uh, actually, the strongest wind area will be those gale force westerlies in the Pervlos, 14-foot seas, otherwise small craft advisories all the way up to St. Lawrence Island. East 20 there in Norton Sound with seas at 4 feet. And then for Monday, North 20, St. Lawrence Island, westerlies 20 knots across the Bering Sea into the uh, Yukon Delta coast, south of Nunavak Island, small craft, small craft advisories, west 25, seas 10 feet, and uh, Pribloffs, west 20 with 9 foot seas. Up along the Beaufort Sea coast here, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, easterlies 15 to 20 with uh, 15 knot winds on the central coast, 4 foot seas, northeast 20 on the west side. Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, northeast 25, seas 9 feet, back down to 20 knots for the Chuck CC. And for uh, Monday, not a lot of change here, northeast uh, 20 to 25, all the way up to Cape Beaufort, east, uh, 25 knot easterly here, central and west side, and stronger winds out of the east, 30 knots now, brisk wind advisories for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, all the way to demarcation point. For tonight, it stays dry up in that area, right down in toward the Tanaw Valley, and then pick up some flurries. Uh, into the Alaska range with uh, winter weather advisories continuing tonight, tomorrow into midnight, tomorrow night here for several inches of snow, maybe some mixed precipitation, stays wet along the North Gulf Coast, less rain over the Panhandle, just a chance of showers down south. And then for the uh, outlook tomorrow, rain and snow across the eastern Bering Sea, showers for the Alaska Peninsula, and more rain on the increase again, another warm front pushes some more moisture, but nothing too terribly heavy. And for Monday, that shifts more rain into the panhandle, but light down south, chance of snow up over the western interior. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.